Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we look into important scientific ideas to see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by uh, President of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to discuss what the Bible has to say about the laws of physics. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you for having me on, Jeff. So, you know, you kind of immediately, when you think about the laws of physics, you think, well, that's science in the Bible, but it does seem like the Bible has something to say about the laws of physics. What do you see that the Bible says about the laws of physics? Well, the fact that God compares his immutability to the immutability of the laws of physics, I think, is very uh, insightful. Uh, Jeremiah 33, God says, I'm a God that never changes. As proof, look at the laws that govern the heavens and the earth. As they don't change, I don't change. And then you got six chapters in the book of Ecclesiastes that talks about one of those laws, a pervasive law of decay, and basically makes the point everything is subject to that law of decay everywhere, every time. Likewise, Romans chapter eight uh, makes the same statement. And you could go to uh, 30 chapters of Genesis and Revelation to make the point that those laws of physics are held constant as a tool in God's hand to bring about the redemption of humanity. You know, I, I find that an interesting discussion and conversation that, uh, you know, for science, we talk about the laws of physics as though they're just there. But in Christianity, those laws of physics seem to have an anchor in the character of God, which explains why they would be constant, if you will. Um, when did you first realize that, or what, what do you find significant about that? Well, what I find significant about that is that that means we have a second source of revelation. We can look at the book of scripture to see God's message to us, but we can also look at the book of nature. Because the laws of physics have never changed anywhere, anytime in the universe, that means we can trust what we see in nature to be a reliable revelation of uh, truth and a reliable revelation of the one behind creation. So kind of flesh that out a little bit for us here. Why is it that having constant laws of physics is important for doing science? Well, Jeff, you're a scientist. If the laws of physics were changing all the time, why do experiments? Why do observations? You wouldn't be able to trust anything that you were producing. And I think it's no accident that the scientific revolution and the scientific method were launched in Reformation Europe. People looked at the Bible, they saw what it said and says, okay, it looks like we can really trust what we see and measure in nature. And uh, that launched the scientific method, the scientific revolution. Notice that in other religious contexts, uh, science was still born. Uh, but because of this message from scripture about what nature is like, science became a meaningful and trustworthy enterprise. You know, I, I do find it interesting that, uh, you know, one of the great breakthroughs of Isaac Newton was recognizing that the reason why the moon orbited the earth and the sun or, or and the earth orbited the moon was because of gravity. In other words, the laws of physics that were operating here on earth were the same laws of physics that are operating out in the cosmos. I mean, it seems like if we don't have that, uh, at the very minimum, we don't have any sort of astronomical science, which would be kind of a bummer for you and I, since we both do quite a bit of that. Yeah, that would be a real bummer. Astronomy would be a non-discipline. But uh, thankfully, that's not the case. And it, it is interesting, no matter where we look in the universe, no matter how far back in time we observe, we see the same laws of physics operating. So let's explore that. Uh, you know, you, you've, you, I know you've written quite a bit, and I've talked quite a bit about how the laws of physics and some of this are constant, and how some uh, or what are some of the evidence supporting that? What are some of the evidence you have from the scientific record that indicate the laws of physics have been constant? Well, there are three lines of, of approach. One is to do experiments in the laboratory, where you measure the laws of physics today and you measure the laws of physics in the lab, say two, three, four years from now. Another tool has been to use helio, uh, helioseismology, looking at the physics of the sun. And there we get to test the constancy of the laws of physics over 20, 30, 40 years. And then we astronomers look at distant quasars and blazars, and that allows us to test the constancy of the laws of physics over the past 11 or 12 billion years. And in a blog I just recently wrote, I made the point, 
we can look at the cosmic microwave background radiation, and that tells us what the laws of physics were like, uh, literally, uh, just uh, a few hundred thousand years after the cosmic creation event. So today we got the tools to actually test whether or not these laws of physics indeed have been constant over the entire age of the universe and over the entire extent of the universe. So, so let's kind of, I want to dig in a little bit to maybe two of those. Let's take a look at when you, know, when you say you can test the laws of physics here in the lab, you know, test it today and then test it again two or three years later. Specifically, what are they looking for and what are the evidences that the laws of physics have been constant uh, and not just changing in some way that we might not be able to detect? Well, the three laws of physics that we can test to the highest degree of precision would be the fine structure constant, the ratio of the mass of the electron to the proton, and the gravitational force constant. And particularly the fine structure constant, we now have scientific tools to demonstrate whether it's constant to 16, 17. There is actually plans to test it to 18 place of the decimal. And what I mean by that, actually measure the change per year uh, to that many places of the decimal. And to do that over the space of a 12 billion years of past history of the universe. So, so it seems like there's kind of two approaches. So let's just take the fine structure constant. You go into the lab, make measurements of it today, make measurements of it in two or three years, uh, and see if it's changed over time. And uh, yeah, that requires very precise and accurate clocks. That's kind of interesting, but let's look at that out in the cosmos. How do we measure the fine structure constant uh, anywhere other than here on the Earth? Well, there are certain hyperfine split spectral lines, and uh, fortunately, neutral hydrogen is one of those lines. And hydrogen being the dominant element in the universe, that means we can measure that spectral line at great distances to high precision. And that explains why we've been able to confirm the constancy of the fine structure constant to such high precision, to such an enormous uh, percentage of the history of the universe. So, so as astronomers have made measurements of the fine structure constant out of these distant places, what sort of variability do we see or potential for variability do we see in the fine structure constant? Well, we're looking, say, 10 to 12 billion uh, light years away, 10 to 12 billion light years back in the past. We're seeing that there's been no change in the fine structure constant relative to what we measure in the lab uh, to about one part in a million. When we make measurements in the lab, we're basically making measurements of how much it changes of per year. And lab measurements are 16, you know, one, there's no more change than one part in say uh, 10 quadrillion uh, per year. And when you look at the 12 billion years, you get about the same level of precision uh, with these distant quasars. So if you compare apples to apples, change per year, uh, we're getting remarkably similar uh, precision measurements for the quasars that we do in the lab. Well, thanks, Hugh. That's a very fascinating discussion. I appreciate your comments. You know, when we look at things from a scriptural perspective, the Bible does describe how this universe behaves. And one of the things that it says is that it will behave very reliably and constantly because that's a reflection of God's character. And yet when we look out into the cosmos, we see just exactly that, that there are abundant evidence that the laws of physics have been constant throughout the history of the universe. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org. Check out Hugh's latest blog on this topic. It's called More Evidence for the Biblical Prediction of Unchanging Physics. It will give you a lot of evidence of how the biblical description and the scientific description of our universe align and how we can use that to point people to the truth of Christianity.